what we're going to do next is we're going to customize our workspace so that it looks like an animator's workspace in Photoshop. So every time that we launch Photoshop, we will have access to our workspace either under Windows, Workspace, or we can go right here to the top right and select our custom workspace. To create a custom workspace, I can start from here or I can start from an existing workspace. So if I go to my shortcut to workspaces, I can select my motion workspace. And the reason why I did that is because it brought up the most important window that we're going to need, which is the timeline. Another way of doing this is to start from where we were. So if I go to essentials to bring up the timeline windows, I'm going to go to window timeline. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dock the Anim Design 2 extension right above my timeline by dragging either the gray bar on top of the extension or the tab. When you do this, make sure that you get a line above the timeline, not drag it on top of the timeline and get a rectangular frame on the timeline because that's going to put both of the windows together. We don't want to do that. We want the Anim Design 2 extension above the timeline. So I'm going to drag it, get that single line, and then I'm going to let it go. So now the Anim Design 2 extension has been docked with the timeline. Next, I'm going to customize my palettes on the right hand side, also known as windows. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of the palettes that I don't want. Again, I'm going to drag the tabs outside of their docked area, and I'm going to click on the X to close the windows that I do not need. The great thing about custom workspaces is that we can add to them as we go along. So if you want to create a custom workspace and then later on you want to add more windows, you can do that and override the existing workspace that you've created with the new elements. So we're going to have layers, channels, and paths as one group. And we want layers to be always open. This is where we're going to see our animation layers. Next, what I want to do is I want to bring in my actions and duck those with my history window. So I'm going to go to Windows, Actions, and notice that Actions and History tend to go hand to hand. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse these two windows by clicking on the double arrow. And next what I'm going to bring in are going to be my brushes, brush settings, and my tool presets. So let's go to Brushes. Let's bring up our brush settings. And let's bring up our tool presets. I'm going to dock my tool presets with my brushes and my brush setting. So expand the panels and then select the tool preset tab and then drag it with the brush settings and then the brushes. Make sure that you get a blue frame. And then what I'm going to do is I like to have my brushes at the beginning of these three tabs. So I'm going to drag the tab to the left. And now I have brushes, brush settings, and then tool presets. Now notice that we can either open our actions or history individually, and then our brushes, brush settings, or tool presets. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my character. And notice that the paragraph comes together with the character. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to collapse these two windows. And this is the basic custom workspace for animation that we will use in this class. To save this workspace, I'm going to go to the workspace drop down menu and I'm going to select new workspace. I'm going to select my keyboard shortcuts, my menus, my toolbar, and I'm going to name it with my name, what it is, and I'm going to give it a date. I'm going to click on save. And now notice that if you mess up your workspace, if some reason everything gets moved around or something disappears, all you have to do is go back to your workspace drop down menu, go to reset your custom workspace and everything will be set correctly. If we want to add more elements to our custom workspace, what we can do is add them first. So let's say that I want to go to Windows and then bring in my swatches. And I'm going to add my swatches right below the paragraph 
and the character group. That way I can expand my swatches without having to expand everything else. And then let's say that I want to add to it my color window. Let's go ahead and collapse it. If I want to save this workspace with the same name and date as my older one, all I have to do is save my workspace with the same name and date. So I'm going to go to New Workspace, select Keyboard Shortcuts, Menus, Toolbar, give it the same name. Now when I try to save this, Photoshop is going to tell me that this name already exists for a custom workspace and if I wish to replace it. And I'm going to say yes. And this is how you create custom animation workspaces in Adobe Photoshop.